I use an original, and we actually have six tanks. Um, so we actually use it in a 120, 65, and two 45s, and a 55. The tank clears up. It makes it look nice and clear the water and everything. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast and man have I got a treat for you today. I'm at the Smithsonian and we are going to get a personal tour of what's called America's Aquarium with Jeff Turner, the man who designed the tank. So Jeff set up in front of the tank and started pointing at everything and showing me what it's all about and I got to tell you uh, that this is a thousand gallons of pure wonder. So seven years ago we installed this nice beautiful fishbowl here at the Natural History Museum in Washington DC and today it's grown in from uh, probably close to a hundred different frags into this growing ecosystem and laying down calcium carbonate. Uh, the, most of the fish are all original, all the clowns are original ORA clowns living in this beautiful 80 pound gigas clam that's been in an aquarium since it was very small when we received it up into New Jersey. So we have a ORA Red Planet, we've got the Formosa up here, we've got plenty of Platy Capricornus, uh, the Blue Tortuoso, Parites, and it's just unbelievable. There's some fungias that are down here uh, that have been here since the beginning as well. It's a big discosoma. Lots of fabulous corals, and one of the most unique things is the clownfish have a tendency to go in and out. There's this trio of clowns that live in and out of the mouth of the clam, and they go and go right inside and swim out sometimes out the vent if it's open. But they go inside, and the clam doesn't seem to be bothered by that whatsoever. One of the stars of the aquarium is the Flamingi Tang. He's really spectacular. Uh, it was in, put in there about, oh, probably about three and a half inches. Now he's close to a foot long and he loves to go swimming about the aquarium and entertaining people as they come up. Uh, soon enough you'll hear the kids coming in screaming Nemo, Nemo, Nemo and Dory, there's Dory. So it's really fascinating. But it's been a huge honor to build this aquarium for the Smithsonian and uh, it's exciting to know that there's millions of people who learn about coral reef ecosystems and coral reef conservation via this beautiful display here in the Natural History Museum. The uh, building is over 100 years old, so the weight load had to fit within the realm of what the slab was from years ago. So we had to engineer in a, a stand that took the weight load and brought it into a much bigger footprint. Um, and then when we brought it in, they had put a brand new terrazzo floor in, had to bring it in on nylon wheels and be very careful uh, with the installation of the aquarium itself. Uh, we have over 2,000 gallons of operating water. Uh, in the behind the scenes space and it is um, quite exciting to um, have put this in here and, and know that it's continuing to thrive and grow you know seven years later. Well, there's a, a large um, calcium reactor back there uh, that enables bioavailable calcium to exist in the aquarium super well and there's calc stir and a big protein skimmer and then weekly there is a 200 to 225 gallon a week water change. Uh, it's very consistent and stable, and all the water parameters allow for this massive amount of growth in a 2,000 gallon body of water. Well, it had been brought in from Palau as aquaculture, probably somewhere about 2000, 2002, I think it was put into Red Bank Veterinary Hospital in New Jersey. It had grown so large that it was rubbing against the glass and starting to scratch the glass. So we made a decision to take it from Red Bank, picked it out of the aquarium there, uh, placed it into an igloo cooler and drove straight here to the museum from New Jersey and put it in the aquarium and here it is today, thriving and, and really uh, calcifying. You can see the growth rings on it. Here it is closing down now, the clam a little bit, but you can see all the growth rings there from when it was very, very small. I think those growth rings is when it first got here at Smithsonian. Now it is, you know, really significant, very healthy. How much bigger is it now than when you put it in the tank? Oh, it's more than doubled in size. Um, the clam is certainly probably close to 80 pounds would be my guess at this point. Is this um, the largest clam in captivity? No, no, there's much larger clams in captivity, but in certainly here it is the largest clam in, in Virginia I would say there's there's some around the country that are pretty big 
uh, but this one is just a, a wonderful beacon to the success of the aquarium. These camper corners have to get fragged up there on a regular basis so that we don't shadow the clam too much. Uh, and even this red planet on top, which is super spectacular, that has to get uh, pruned back uh, so it doesn't shade out the clam too much. The clam, of course, r relies on light to allow it to grow and thrive in the aquarium. But the uh, lighting, there's uh, four 1700K Ushios in the back, metal halite, um, and those are 400 watt. And in the front, there's, there's two uh, 20K Ushios also. There's some really spectacular things if you look, John. Up, up on the top here, there's a green uh, Calastria that's really grown well. And that's interacting with that uh, purple tort uh, acroporid up there. You can see them firing off at each other. There's a line where they're growing into each other. So from above, you can see corals out competing each other for space, uh, which just is like on a real reef. just like on a real reef. It's really spectacular. That's not a Fabia? Nope, that is a, uh, a uh, Calastria. Yep, there's, a, there's, a, there's one there and there's one over on the right. Uh, so again, all of these corals were grown from frags, nothing bigger than the size of your, your palm. And those plate corals came from A&M. They are babies from, uh, coral, from plate coral skeletons that A&M had in their facility. And they were really no bigger than a half dollar size, maybe a little bit bigger than that when they first went in. And they, they've done super well. We started with four, there's three left and they just live in the front and they love it. We've got a local service uh, professional, Phil Wynn and his company Reef Escapes have been helping to manage this for the last six years. Um, and they're doing a great job and follow all the original protocols that we laid down um, in managing the system. And it has done super well, as you can tell by evidence by the growth in the aquarium. So there it is, a custom tour of a thousand gallon tank, America's Aquarium at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. with the man who designed it, Jeff Turner. I hope you enjoyed that tour. And if you ever get a chance to come to Washington, D.C. and you're a fish person, you've got to make a stop by and see this aquarium. It's absolutely incredible. That's all for this FinCast. Be sure to click around a little bit. There's lots of other topics, lots of tours, lots of interviews with the people who are leading the hobby and lots of good information pieces, fresh and salt water as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next FinCast.